Hello and welcome all you lords and ladies of fate. You have once again found yourselves in the only professional Twitch TTRPG stream that allows you, the viewer, to impact the stories being told on your screens, and you can at me on that. In order to do so, you must spend your fate chips. These are our loyalty points that you earn just by watching, following, hosting, or subscribing, or even just for engaging with us in chat. Use those fate chips to heal your favorite players, summon in a custom item, or make our players say silly things. You can even enforce not enforce, you can force the adventures into random encounters. Tonight, we are playing The Curse of Strahd, a D&D 5th edition module. And joining me tonight is our wonderful cast of characters. First up, we have Jen Washitashi playing Frank, the Fear Bowl College of Whispers Bard. I am Frank. Next up, we have Nat playing TikTok, the three Kreen fighter, Psy Warrior. Hello. Hello. As well as Merc Puppy playing Bashful Underriver, the path of the Berserker Barbarian Dwarf. When do I get to punch things? Very soon. Very soon, I promise. Uh, and then lastly, we have... Good Devil himself playing Gorpul, the life domain tortle cleric. Yeah, yeah, that's me, all right. I, th I don't think it's nice of you to be lying to the bashful like that. I don't think he's punching anything today. <laughs> and you have me, Arman or Pwn Donkeys, or hey, you, the dude who wears that red robe. Uh, I'm. Your humble dumble dumb, dumble master. I'm your 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 dumble master. Dumble master. I like humble dumble master. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just what you get. Got a character. Humble dumble. Um. Sadly, uh, we will be short one Tavy trash as they are uh uh, uh uh taking some time for themselves today. Uh, which is perfectly valid, 100%. We're not going to get too far. Today, we're going to do a little short stream. We usually go for two hours. We're probably going to go for an hour and a half this evening and play around in that wonderful little camp that definitely doesn't have any phallic imagery on it. If I just... There we go. There we go. There's the non-phallic map. How are we all doing tonight? I'm feeling lovely. I'm feeling slow. Doing great. <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, well, uh, previously on The Curse of Strahd, you all arrived at this humble camp where the Vistani welcomed you with open arms, regaling you in tales of horror and, well, just, just horror. There really weren't any friendly messages being told here uh you were also I mean, that one guy was smiling a lot yo oh, yeah there was a lot of smiles there was a lot of smiles uh you know that was fun uh and you all had your uh your reading by madam ava where she gave you some mystical insights into some items that will help you along your way in your quest to uh defeat strahd because honestly that seems to be the only way that you'll leave she gave you insight into three magical items, an ally that will help you in your quest, and the location where you shall be fated to fight the evil curse that is Strahd one final time. Wait, did uh, we fight him up already? Yeah, I was going to say. Well, we'll see. There's a lot of campaign left. With Bastion, it's possible he's fought him. He <laughs> I he feel like counts. we... I feel like the the players don't know this, but one cheese has definitely fought strong. <laughs> well, we'll we'll get into the world of cheese. Don't you worry. Don't don't you worry. Um, <laughs> so uh, where we left off last, uh, uh, you all had just been told this uh, terrifying story by uh, uh, the 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 kind gentleman Vistani, who who brought you here to the camp. Uh, telling you about a a a, a terrifying tale his brother's cabin or the adventure towards his brother's cabin 
Uh, and that is where you all kind of are now, around the fire. And uh, the Vistani all kind of are now looking at you all. Well, well. You have heard many stories of us. You come from outside of Barovia. You must have many tales of your deeds. Please. Let us know. And then they all kind of just kind of look um, at you all. Do you, you want us talk about us? Um, the, the Vistani comes over to you and kind of puts his arm around you, Frank, and goes, Yes, yes, my furry friend. Absolutely. Please, tell us, tell us about how you all came to be a, a traveling group of adventurers. Uh, I'm not so good, um, with the words. He looks at you and goes, that is fine. You don't have to be good at telling story. You just must tell story. But you're so good at it. You're so very, very good. We've been telling the same stories for years and years. We've had plenty of practice. Mm. Okay. And then Frank sits back and says nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell a story. Please, please, everyone, from... everyone, shh, shh, let, let this bug man tell a story. It's very funny, actually. I came from an area of much desert land. And in order to come here, I had to travel across a great mountain range. This mountain range was covered with lots and lots of snow on my journey across this range i stumbled across a a group of beings much like yourself that were being stalked by some creature i took it upon myself to help them so we dismembered this creature and carried on to guide them through the mountains into the other side of the the grasslands beyond. But in order to get there, the journey was very perilous. And many people died along the way. It was very funny because food shortages ran out very quickly. And in order to maintain survival, we had to eat the dead. <laughs> this is not very uh, uncommon where I'm from. But your people found it terribly frightening. <laughs> we finally made it across, and out of the original 20, about 10 remained. They weren't very grateful, but they did survive. TikTok, what point of that story, what part of that story was funny to you? <laughs> Oh, how uh, put back they were of uh, survival when the necessity to do so was to eat the dead. You you I, see you I, see as as you're having this conversation with Frank, there were a few Vistani children that were sitting close to you, TikTok, because they were very very curious about you because they've never seen a bug person before. But now you see they kind of start inching themselves backwards slowly as to not make any sudden movements. And all of their eyes are just fixed on your your uh, mandibles, I guess. Oh, no, no, children. You, it's, uh, it's, he's not one you have to worry about. Oh. After all, he's not me. I couldn't even tell you where any one of my 386 children are. Usually they just hatch and uh, off they go. What I what I love about this is I feel like that number has gotten bigger every single time it's been mentioned, <laughs> which I love. 
<laughs> I got ten mouths to feed. <laughs> he's having he's having kids literally in between telling the story every time he tells. <laughs> we we've been accused of being slow, uh, but I've never been accused of such. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> Frank didn't like that apparently. Oh, oh, oh thank you, Foley, uh, Foley Department. You stopped right at the wrong time. <laughs> um, you get the the Vistani comes over to you uh, to talk and goes, "Well, uh, it's not exactly uh, the tale I was expecting, but." Well, the tale of how we all came together is a rather boring one. Uh, probably a tale as old as time in these parts. Uh, there were a few of us sitting around in a bar, or excuse me, a tavern. And uh, when some of us were approached for a job, I found this one almost getting eaten by, by, by wolves. You uh, promised you wouldn't tell anyone. Oh, I thought the, uh, you know, the bite marks and the scratches on your face were, were sufficient you, enough evidence to... Uh, you have uh, broken my trust. <laughs> this story is a lie. Does that mean... This man is lie? lying. But there is, uh, there does, uh, exist a story of our lost adventure before we came, uh, across all of you, uh, where we've, uh, first encountered our uh, our first Barovian vampire uh, he, he, he seemed to have um, and, uh, it's not to me to, to shame him uh, but somewhat of a uh, you may know it is a uh, a patronly kink or a fatherly kink uh, I think some of them call him daddy uh, but this disturbed the priest uh, that worked there, I think, uh, quite the amount. So he asked us to do away with this random vampire that snuck into his basement. Well, this is also a lie. The I'm pretty sure I told you guys the story like an hour ago. He goes, yes, I remember. I, I remember, yes. Well, an hour ago was two weeks ago, mm -hmm. to my credit, so. Uh, he, <laughs> so you all have already faced one of the demon lords spawn and yeah, you've come he, away with it come away from it victors it's very he telling. was a boy no i'm bashful not victor <laughs> Well, um, now we find, we find ourselves uh, being told to pass through here to speak to, I believe it's your seer. Uh, I don't know what her, uh, but Madame's uh, official title uh, for your camp is. But we find ourselves here, uh, you know, seemingly uh, like as part of an ongoing train of adventurers that are summoned here by Strahd. When yes. You all, uh, when you all have seen the previous adventurers, uh, did they seem confident? Were they here with purpose? Or... Some were here with purpose, but others seem lost, confused. But... Seldom do they come with the accolades that you have. I mean, beating one of the Dreadlord's spawn is no easy task. Unless he was weak and, and hadn't fed in weeks or months or years, then it would Did be... He... Yes? Yes, this is true. He was a very small, weak, weak boy who had not eaten. His his papa had starved him. It was very sad. <laughs> then my suggestion to you is to not let your successes get to your head. 
These lands are very dangerous. I know my story earlier may seem fanciful, but I stand behind it. I still see his face from time to time, peering out from the corners of the bushes. That sounds terrifying. You said he had a maniacal smile on yes. his face? Never changing smile. I have a question for TikTok. Do you think yeah. this is funny? That he's got never ending smile? <laughs> yes. Do you think this is humorous? Okay. I'm still trying to figure out your vibe, man. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I find it bizarre that something dead would smile. So, all, all, all the time, smile, man. Not funny. But poor people eat friends funny. <laughs> that's, where we're, that's where we're at. <laughs> Is there not irony in that? I, I, that song ruined that word for me. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what that word means now. Perception. perception. I, I, have a, I have a story. Oh, tell. please, please tell, tell. But I fear it would take a very long time. So uh, I'm going to ask. Uh, I'm going to ask if Bashful, the warrior, the grand warrior with many, many tales of fighting and victories and valor, has a story he would like to tell. Because mine's going to take a very, very, very long time. As you can see, I speak speak poorly. I speak very slow and hard hard it's hard to find the words often and I drag things out. Can I roll to tell if he's stalling? <laughs> hmm? Can I roll to tell if he's stalling? Absolutely. Go ahead and roll an insight check. <laughs> Nine. Uh, inconclusive. Okay. You can't, you, you can't quite put your finger, you feel like he might be stalling, but you've also been partied up with Frank for a little while now, and this is kind of how he talks, so it does track. Well, I have a short story and a long story. Short stories of how I uh, joined this here party. Long story is of my past. Which you want to hear? I'd love to know how you uh, uh, came to be a member of this party. This party seems very strong. Oh, that was I a good it. choice. I've heard the story about Bashful and his six other brothers. <laughs> <laughs> well, how I joined the party is... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, Alright. How I joined the party is simple. Uh, I beat a guy to death in an alley and they told me I was hired. <laughs> they wanted to recruit that guy, but I was clearly better, so they took me in and we've been best friends ever since. Best is a strong word, but is clan. Yes, Greatest, then. <laughs> okay. It, yes. well, it, was, it was either, uh, and I'm going to lean into the nearest Vistani uh, out of earshot of, of Bashful. It was either be friends with him or be, uh, or, or end up like the guard he beat up. He was wearing his skin when we met him. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. I heard about the job from him as he was dying, and I tried to uh, get the job, so I thought I'd try to be him. And what better way than using a skin suit? 
Wait, I like so the you heard it? I guess, I guess I, I learned about, <laughs> Yeah, I look at the one Pastani guy who told the story, like, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You know the story about the scooter. <laughs> Uh, he looks back at you and goes, Well, the lands you all come from are uh, strange indeed. Strange indeed. Um, at I, this point... I, um, sir, I ter- technically don't come from lands, and that's, that's, that's a little bit racist, if I do say so myself. It wasn't smarling, if that helps. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while this conversation is going on... Um, Let's see. Uh, there are two people in this party with passive perceptions of 14. I believe that's TikTok and Gorpel. Both of you notice um, uh, Irina and Echo leaving um, Madam Ava's tent. At some point in time during story time, you would surmise at this point that they snuck into the tent. Um Echo goes uh, and walks back to the uh, where the draft horses are uh, by the riverbank and just kind of sits down. And Irina comes up to to the the group and says, "I think um, I think Echo needs a few minutes with her own thoughts. Um, she'll she'll be okay, but." She just had a private reading with uh, with Madam Eva. She did say that any of you are welcome to to uh, to have a private reading before you leave, before we leave. But I am a little tired, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go lay down. Is and she still dressed as Echo? Or? Yes. Okay. Okay, it, Echo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Frank, yeah, Frank turns and goes, which one was that? You know which one that was? Well, Echo never talks about herself in the third person. That might be Irina this time. We don't know that for certain, though. Well, well all right, inside check. Humans are very confusing. <laughs> uh, that's going to oh, be I... a, a 15. I'll also roll. I really want to fail this. 10. <laughs> 15, 15 notices, 10 does not. You you wait one second. Okay, listen. I Thir- 13. 13 does not. Yes. And this um, is I how think Frank's going to go. The rest of the session is debating <laughs> whether that was Echo or not. <laughs> Frank's going to go in and get a private reading. Um, he's going to. He, he was trying to talk to uh, who he thought was Echo. Um, or, well, he wasn't sure, obviously. As But they said, I'm going to go take a nap or go to sleep. And he didn't get a chance to ask questions. So his curiosity is peaked, and he's going to do a private reading. Wonderful. You step into the um, uh, the tent. The familiar uh, uh, light mist is uh, all around. Crystal ball glowing in the center of the table. And Madam Eva goes, yes. <laughs> Please. Come in. Come in. Oh, you wish to boy. have a private reading. I forgot how much you frightened me. Um, it's been so long since I've been in this tent. Uh, speak, speak, yes, speak. please. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Foley Department's taking a nap, apparently. <laughs> um, so Frank sits and goes, um, there is something wrong with me and without saying it out loud without saying it out loud do you know what I speak of she runs her hand across the crystal ball and the glow kind of fades into this like muddled cloudiness inside and she goes yes my dear I see all in in these lands (laughs) you do have an ailment I see a serious one yes one that has ostracized you from your clan yes then you also know the feelings that you've been feeling since you've stepped into Barovia yes 
You must take care. Stronger. Yes. It could happen any night. But... This is what I was afraid of. This is what I was afraid of. You have come to the right place. For I know nowhere in all of the realms where a cure exists outside of Barovia. Oh, so... Double-sided coin? Yes. I'll catch two. You may be trapped here, but this is exactly where you're supposed to be. Please, can you tell me what I need to do? This is a great shame. <laughs> she, she looks, she peers through the crystal ball and you can feel her gaze kind of fix at your eyes. That is not how this works. I can only give you the information that you need. You must piece it together. Well, that's what I'm, I'm, but hold on. I ask for how fix. You say I can only give you information. I need, I need how fix. So I think we're on the same page here. She goes, indeed, indeed. I have okay. told you everything so you need to know. Be wary. And be vigilant. Trust I'm me. I'm those two things. When, when you are in a position to find the cure, you'll know. Or you'll be dead already. What? Oh, boy. Not only are you terrifying, but you are very unhelpful. <laughs> this is your first time having a seer give you a reading, I take it. I feel like you've maybe read nothing. You told me <laughs> nothing about it. You've, you've, uh, you could have uh, give me a sign that you know what I'm talking about I don't know why I'm speaking so regularly right now Hold on. <laughs> can you give me a sign that you understand what I speak of without saying it out loud my friends are probably you know the glass to the door if you know what I mean and they don't know and I need to keep it that way because I don't believe a thing you're saying at this point. Um, she looks at you and says, The last time you felt this bad was only days, a week or so ago. You shouldn't be feeling these feelings for another few weeks. Yet, here you are. Here I am, and I'm feeling them. Ah, yes. okay. Yes, okay. Barovia is different than the Frank, realm you come from. I see. Frank, um, slow, slow boy. <laughs> hard, hard to think. Um. Yes, yes, but your intentions are pure. That is a rare thing in Barovia. Lean uh, on your friends, your new clan. For if it. your wish is to rid yourself of your ailment, it will be hard to do by yourself. So my, f my clan is key to restore clan. Clan is clan. Yes, clan yes. Clan is clan. <laughs> God, you're creepy. Um, I have one more question, if you don't mind, creepy lady. Please, be my guest. <laughs> I feel like she probably hates him at this point. <laughs> have, um, have, I feel, TM, a great shame, TM, <laughs> about... Acts I may have or may have not um, com committed. Can you can you clarify? Should I feel such shame? She looks at you again and goes, "Oh my dear, 
the fact that you feel shame is good. It means you're not too far gone. It doesn't feel good. No, I suppose I it wouldn't. Cling to that shame, for it lets you know that you are still the person that you were born. To feel no shame would be to welcome your ailment. Mm, that seems more of a bashful thing. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you. This has been helpful. <laughs> she, she goes, again? again, I feel like this is your first time seeing a seer. We're not supposed to spell things out for you to the letter. You're supposed to have to piece things together on your own. Now, please, be gone. <laughs> he gets up and he's just... He's mumbling angrily. <laughs> and, um, now, and, uh, now that you've all kind of, like, yep, now that you've all kind of been keyed into, uh, what's going on here, you all see Frank go in for a few minutes, and then he comes back out. Frank, uh, uh, what's the difference in your overall demeanor between going in and coming out? Uh, I think we saw Frank before as sort of, um, like... Uh, uh kind of trying to stay in the background sort of hide dude uh and maybe had like you know s overbearing like rolled shoulders and a low hanging head and whenever he would do his bard thing it would usually be you know sad sounding sad ish sounding um like there was just something aching at him and i think frank's tall standing a little bit taller now Maybe his shoulders are a little more upright. Maybe instead of staring at the ground or his feet, he's he's looking ahead at his his clan um, with hope. Hold on to that hope he gave for that as lady, long as you can. He gave, that lady a <laughs> <laughs> he gave that creepy lady a lot of shit, but he he definitely feels better. Uh, you know, he just had some buyer's remorse, if you know what I mean. Got it, got it, absolutely. And you all, um, you all are, are keyed in on that. I'm not going to make anyone make insight check rolls for that because uh, uh, I, I, I feel like at this point, Frank's not trying to, like, hide his face at this. He just kind of, like, walks out and sits down. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, on his way, though, he gives, like, a fat, super obvious, like, cartoonish wink at Gorpal <laughs> and says, we're in the right place, my friend. As he sits down next to him. You know, it's not going to be the first time you've told me this. I hope one of these times you're, you're right there, Frank. So, so as do I. You seem to as be in I. better spirits. Uh, was, did this hear? Oh, well, what did you all talk about? Mm, well, to be honest, um, she uh, made Frank dizzy. <laughs> uh, Frank knew, and then she said <laughs> she Frank already Frank knew. Or <laughs> and I, I, I felt like I was talking to myself, but also in circles. It was, but it, all in all, I feel. Oh, um, she's got that kind of hair. I had one kind of lettuce out here. There must be another kind of lettuce in there. <laughs> It was not that you. It was. It was smoky in there. Like when I opened the tent gate, it was like, you know. Um. But yeah, no. Um. I feel better. I. Uh, Madam Eva has said this is where I need to be in order to um become whole. Oh, that's, but that's all that she said. Essentially, that's the only usual thing she said. <laughs> Become whole. Well. Become. Oh, well, wait, I had a pun that was going to ruin everything. I'm so glad I didn't say it. Yes, become whole. 
<laughs> I almost blew everything out of the water just now. Become a hole. Well, uh, perhaps I judged uh, this uh, this here a bit too quickly. I'd like to see for myself. You uh, you risked you risked up there. Uh, well, there, Frank. Thanks, buddy. Uh, and Gorpel's gonna stand up and walk towards and into uh, Madame Ava's. And uh, you you peel back the flap tent, the flap of the tent, and you walk in and uh, oh, oh God, very smoky. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, Madame Eva goes, yes, yes, Gorpel the Grand. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. You don't like that name, just I'm Gorpel. Just, I'm just Gorpel. I don't do anything that's grand. That's just what what Frank named me uh, after saving his life repeatedly well please have a seat well if i must and you just see his legs retract and you know balances on the on the butt of his shell <laughs> now what brings you to my tent what would you like to know? What insights do you seek? Madam Ava, uh, it seems uh, I just keep being dragged into one situation after the next. Uh, when truly what I want, all I want is to go home. Now, I belong to this, this, this temple, this esoteric order. Um... Well, it's, it's not the worst. Uh, they don't go, uh, they don't make you go knocking door to door uh, and, and make you bring a small child with them. Usually, uh, like myself, they just let all 403 of them go. Uh, so, they've tasked me with finding uh, what they refer to as an ancient amulet. Uh, it could just be a rock in the dirt for all I know, but uh, uh, I've been tasked with finding the uh, the uh, the amulet of Raven Kind. And some of your uh, some of your card readings gave me pause. Uh, there was the Necromancer. There was uh, uh, oh no, uh, the Bishop uh, also caught my attention. Or even a juror seems like as how how do you interpret or do you interpret uh, you just uh, or are you just dealing cards and it is for the um, the the person you're doing the reading for is it for them to interpret like how does this you know where's the damn smoke machine. <laughs> As you say that, the smoke just kind of thickens a, a little bit. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you do also do well with a humidifier. God damn. <laughs> she looks at you and she goes, I cannot interpret the reading. I can only deliver it. The cards that came out for you, the necromancer, the abjurer, as you said, they all tell a story. Of where you are to go. Well, perhaps I'll ask a more direct question. Uh, you've, have, how long have you uh, resided in Barovia? She gives pause for a moment, almost like she has to think on that for 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 a moment. She goes, "Well, I." seem to have lost track. It seems I've been here for a long time. I can't quite pinpoint exactly when I was tied to Barovia. So, point being, you know the place just a little bit. Um, 
one, one of your card readings uh, mentioned uh, a house guarded by a stone dragon. Now, that may, I'm guessing that wasn't little. Do you know of any uh, statu uh, statues uh, of dragons uh, like we made the stone that would be nearby? She looks at you and goes, Oh, I, I guess I could give you one freebie. I can't do all of the work for you, but Stone Dragon. Stone Dragon could be a statue outside of Ravenloft. It could be at the Amber Temple, or it could be at Argon's Vault. None of these places are places I would want to venture. I'm sorry, DM, after Ravenloft, what were the other two? Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, type these out into uh, your um, Skype chat here, because one of them I don't feel like trying to... to, to, to I heard uh, Amber Temple and uh, August Vault. Yep. And... Uh, or August Vault. I'm going to double check the spelling on it, but that's that's how I have it written down. Ar Argon's Vault, f f f thought, f thought, and Amber Temple. Um, I do not know where it is you have to go, but I imagine you'll know when you see it. That's usually how these readings work. I understand that, and I wasn't asking you to do the work for me. I was asking a local about local knowledge. Surely that must be different quite enough. Yes, enough for me to acquiesce, however slightly. Was there well, anything else you... Gorbel, the reluctant grand, would like insight on? Man, many uh, adventuring parties have have passed through uh, your, with heavy quotations, we'll say, care. What similarities? do we share with those that have fallen and where are we different she looks at you all she looks at you uh, and kind of kind of says uh now all of the beings who come to barovia share one thing in common at some point in time they piqued the interest of the Dread Lord. Whether or not there are any differences between your group and the groups that came before you remains to be seen. Buffalo is always mad at Ava, and his <laughs> legs pop pop out from his shell. Uh, he'll dust himself uh, off and uh, and if. Uh, and before he uh, opens uh, the curtain to walk out, and if uh, you got any more of that uh, incense that you're burning, uh, I'd like to take a, a a bag's worth before we leave. She Thanks. looks. She she looks at you and goes, "I think that can be arranged." But wait, as your hands like on the flap, is that <laughs> dream pastries? I smell. Why, why, yes, it is. Are you a fan of dream pastries? Oh, no. They go straight to my thighs. Have you eaten any? Uh, I have not. Uh, uh, I have a few. 
uh, uh, because I saw a man sell his child to the purveyor of these dream pastries just to have a, a bag full of them. She goes, indeed, they are quite popular. Is there anything I should worry about if, should I decide to consume one? She looks at you and she goes, I would wait before consuming another. And why is that? Sometimes people can get quite ferocious in their appetite when dream pastries are involved. A little bit here or there is one thing. I only wish to warn you, don't become addicted, lest you sell your children. Oh, well, if that, if all they cost me is children, then the good thing there is I have, uh, you know, 486 of those bastards. So, uh, she looks, well, at, she, she, she looks in the, uh, the crystal ball and yep. she goes, actually it's 493 now. I'm a papa again, and hopefully more than, uh, you know, 8% survive this time. <laughs> she goes, wonderful, wonderful. Well, enjoy the rest of your stay. I shall have someone gather some incense and bring it to you before you leave. All right, and um, walking out of the tent, um... Gorpul, as I recall, I, I'd have to look at my inventory if I even put it in there. I think he has two. He has a sweet, uh, one of the sweets and one mm -hmm. of the savory. He does indeed. Um, I don't know which he was chaotic. Um, <laughs> I love that you, you as as the player are struggling to 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 reconcile what corporal would do i love this this is great veach is very very uh, uh good um good points here uh arm slayer with the xp drop for tiktok yeah uh while uh that uh attempt situation is going on i'm going to be leaning into to frank and uh and saying so they they wanted to survive, but but in order to do so, they had to eat. So they had to eat their own to survive. But they yes, I heard. didn't want to. Yep, I, I still don't see the humor. You've repeated this so many times, and I I appreciate you. I am a little afraid of you, but this. But you're, I, you're not dead. It's not. Oh, boy. I might be one day. Will you consume me? I'm I'm letting you know this is not funny. If it's a matter I'm, of survival. It's, that's even sadder. Or if you want me to. I once had a, a dwarf named uh, Erm that wanted <clears throat> me to eat him as well upon his demise. And I did so out of honor. Mm. I know someone who ate his parents the same way. Um, <laughs> Don't cross streets. <laughs> thus the multiverse was born. <laughs> thus, thus the multiverse was born. Um, so, so yeah, uh, you, you all, as you're having this conversation with um, uh, uh, Frank by the fire... Uh, you, you notice the the gathering of the Vistani has kind of thinned out. There aren't as many people. The children are all gone. Um, they've all moved back to their little wagons and whatnot. Yeah, they they they've had enough of story time with Uncle TikTok. Um, Uncle TikTok just made it so much fun. <laughs> right. <laughs> he's, he's At least I didn't say daddy or anything like that, okay? In a creepy way. Um, is me acknowledging it and saying daddy. it? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, so, yeah. Um, uh, 
uh, TikTok and um, uh, and Bashful uh, before the the night is out. You both have the opportunity to go have private readings if you wish. Um, no one's gonna force you. Um, but uh, the like I said, the camp the camp is starting to slow down. It's not as noisy or, or, or happy as it was. It's kind of you know it's, it's the middle of the night now. People uh, are sleeping. Just 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 for TikTok and Bashel's edification, Frank is real giggly. <laughs> like just having everything to him except for TikTok's fucking story is hilarious. <laughs> And uh, just as a point of character doing something, uh, G uh, Gorful is going to um, you know, sit by the riverside, um, eat uh, the sweet and the savory in each, you know, flipper, paddle, whatever, uh, just, and just staring at them contemplatively. So, so you're, you're just you're just together. staring at both of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, uh, that and we'll, we'll say well he's gonna have a, a little bit of a religious meditation about it okay okay i like that um do me a favor frank roll me a constitution save oh boy here we go here we go uh jen washitashi i think it depends on what he's doing with it 15 it's on your 15. con okay okay um you start to feel a little sleepy but um if you want you can fight it Nah, I think Frank will just, he's having, he's fucking, you know, he's sleepy for reasons, you know, he's sleepy for reasons and he's feeling at, at, at peace. Like this whole environment to him, he got his new tattoo. He got through his meeps, his struggle with the meeps. Um, uh, he, he got confirmation that he's in, you know, in the right place. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's, he's for sure just kind of like lean into it. He's feeling sleepy. He's, he's leaning right into it. As you as you close your eyes, you're filled with this intense, warm feeling. This just it feels like you've just been wrapped in a blanket of happiness, and everyone you've ever loved has come by to just tuck a little bit of that happiness blanket underneath of you, one by one. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute. But um, does anyone else want to do anything before the night is uh, uh, done? I'll wander in to get the reading. Okay. TikTok, uh, you you walk in and uh, the 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 air is thick with that uh, that smoke. You see, Madam Eva sits as if almost she was expecting you and goes, "Yes, yes." TikTok, please come, have a seat. I was told there was something to read in here. She she looks at you and goes, "Oh, I have plenty of books if you want to read, but." If you need any personal insight, I'd be more than happy to help you with that. Is there anything specific you'd like to know, or anything you need help with? Uh, and, and uh, uh, just a meta thing. I can't remember the name of the person she said that Strahd was infatuated with. Uh, the, um, uh, person that she said that, hold on a second, I've got that right here, uh, do, do, do is Tatiana. Uh, I'm curious, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, this Tatiana that Strahd was, uh, infatuated with. But you, you looked very in depth at uh, Irina when you were talking about this. Is there some kind of connection there? She uh, uh, looks at you and goes, "There might be." Strahd gets infatuated with peep some women from time to time, some men. He. Whether he is infatuated with Irina because he just is, or whether there is something else there, I do not know. But you are aware that souls cannot leave Barovia. 
Do souls re-inhabit people? Eventually. You see, more people are born than there are souls for. That is why all nine out of every ten people on average have no soul in Barovia. You can tell by the way their eyes look. Dead almost. No hope, no dreams, no drive. So no new souls are born in Barovia. Correct. Only the ones trapped here when Strahd made his deal. Hmm. Are you one of those souls? She, uh, she looks at, she goes and says, the Vistani are not part of this curse. The Vistani all have souls. We are not your typical denizen of the lands of Barovia. We, uh, as I said, because of our generosity to Strahd when he was injured, we are allowed to come and go as we please, to a certain extent. So... We are not as tied to these lands as the rest of the people are. And do the reborn souls uh, know of their past lives? Most do not. Some of the people of Barovia even believe that souls waiting for new bodies to inhabit all are all inhabiting the ravens of Barovia. That is why many believe it's bad luck to kill a raven in, in Barovia. Would the not soul just not find a new home? She kind of chuckles a little bit. <laughs> oh, this is, of course, just a silly superstition. I see. This has been very insightful. She looks at you and kind of, and, and uh, gives a pause for a moment and says, Do well to protect your friends. The dangers haven't even begun for you yet. Thank you. And he'll kind of like bow with his arms, forearms out, and exit the tent backwards. She'll she'll do a slight head nod in um, respect back to you. And uh. You go ahead and, and, and leave the tent, and, you know, you walk out of the tent to see uh, Frank has completely passed out where he was uh, sat um, before. Almost as if uh, the, the feeling of sleep started to overcome him, and he gave no fight at all and just fell asleep where he uh, uh, sat. And then you look over... Uh, by his lonesome, you see Gorpal standing, sitting there, staring down in his lap. Uh, you can't quite see from where you are what he's staring at. And then over by the horses, by the riverbank, you see um, uh, Echo has also kind of curled up and uh, fallen asleep by the horses. I will initiate a patrol. All right. And then there was one. Bashful, what so would I, you like to do? So I see everyone's acting weird after they exit that tent, so I get up and I march over and enter the tent. She, uh, uh as soon as you open the tent, um, Madame Eva goes, Yes! I was beginning to think you weren't going to come, but we both know your curiosity would have gotten the better of you. Please, 
Have a seat. So I walk through the smoke and I sit down. Mm -hmm. uh, and and for you, since you're so much shorter, the smoke is way more in your face than it was for anyone else. So you're like you're literally walking through. Um, I think I think I just stumble into the table by accident. <laughs> I love it. Um, Madam Eva uh, uh, looks at you and says, "Well." You are quite a character, are you? Aren't you? Yeah. Do, does the rest of your group suspect anything about your letters? Uh, what letters? I don't know what you're talking about. She did, she did tell it, you something? she waves her hand over the crystal ball and she goes, "Now nah, come." Come now, bashful. You should know by now that I am not some mere purveyor of parlor tricks. I know of the necromancer's letters. Yeah, it's hard to write a letter when you're dead. <laughs> she, she looks at you and she goes, um... While most people would think this as a sign of some malice or hate, I know that you truly just didn't want to make some of the members of your party upset. And that shows your true character. Oh, shucks. <laughs> she, she looks at you again and goes, I know that you like to put on a big, strong face. And you are very, very strong and powerful. And you will get more powerful as you continue on your adventure in Barovia. But know that it's okay every once in a while to be vulnerable, especially if it's with trusted friends. And these people that you are traveling with are the closest thing you're going to have to friends. Especially after the last time. Ooh. Yeah. That's kind of a thing. <laughs> she goes, fear not. You don't have to worry about that. That was in the past. And in front of me, I see a future with great potential for you. But what you do with that potential is up to you. Will you trust your friends? Or will you falter? Well, they've been mostly cool. I'm a little nervous because one guy likes to eat people. Yes, I, he he I heard that story from in here. I thought I was creepy. Well, jury's out on that, but, uh, <laughs> I trust most of them. That's, yeah. that's good. Is there anything specific you wish to know? Yeah, uh, which is the real Echo? I feel like you might know, because we're having trouble with that, and I know it's a smart thing, but I... I don't want to push the wrong way into battle and, you know. Um, she goes, she goes, yes. I can see how that would be confusing. Here, take this. And she flips you a coin. As long as you're holding on to this coin, it will be very easy for you to tell your friends apart. Um, and meta here, basically, uh, as whoever has this coin in their possession, they're just going to get uh, advantage on perception checks to determine who they're talking to when speaking to either Irina or Echo. The amount of importance this theme has taken in this D&D campaign is something that makes me very happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Now, is it just for uh, Echo and Irina, or can that be used by for anyone else? Um, the way she worded it, she did say uh, to keep to to tell your your friends apart. So, I'm gonna say Meta. In any situation where your friends are trying to pretend to look like or be something they are not, it will you will have advantage on any check to determine that. What or whoever uh, has the, the coin. What if they're trying to pretend to be one of my friends? Would that work? Yes. Okay. You can uh, Veej says you can tell Gorpal from his five hundred kids. <laughs> That's a good zinger. I had another eight. Mazel tov. <laughs> I love it. You can buy so many dream pastries. Oh. That or supply uh, supply that lady uh, a nice ample workforce that gets replenished once every summer. <laughs> but they're a potato. All right. Um... Is there any anyone any? Bleh, let me try that again. Is there anything that anyone is going to do before going to bed for the uh, the night in the camp here? No. Um, Gorpal, did you did you just fall asleep palming these these pastries like 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 sitting up or did you put them uh, away and 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 curl up? Put them away and and. All, all limbs and head retracted. Yeah, got the babbling water next to him. He got knocked. He he, he got knocked out by the uh, the subtle sound. Perfect, perfect. Um, let's go ahead <laughs> and and resolve something here. So, Frank, as that yeah. warmth fills you and you slip into a dream you come to basking in bright vibrant colored lights and that warmth is just everywhere you look around and that bright light that's shining in your face slowly starts to dim into a scene why don't you go ahead and describe to us this amazing day that Frank is is feeling, is seeing in his dream? Hmm. F Frank um, very, is very happy with his new clan. I think... If Frank was having a, a, a dream about, I'm going to speak in. This is just that's fine. Me talking about it. Uh, if Frank is super happy with his his new clan, and I think if Frank was having a dream right now with what's going on with him, uh, it would be that he was with his new clan, like solving this puzzle of this town and making himself whole and being with these people. Uh, and bug people that freak him out, and turtle friend, um, and you know, little little sp specter rabbits. Uh, he would just be with them, having a great gotcha. day. Your stuff doing here. You're 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 wandering through Barovia. Um, it's not the Barovia that you recognize from your your short time here. It's. Um, uh, a lot of flowers along the road. The road is paved. Um, the sun is shining bright. Birds are chirping. Everything feels great. You get into a town. Everybody is cheering for all of you as you walk through this town, Frank. You get to the tavern, and the, the owner of the tavern rushes to you, and he's like begging you to play. He wants your band to play. And... Oh, I, I wasn't prepared. Uh, and the guitar just, like, comes to me. Mm -hmm. And let's see. We're going to do... Do you remember which one was the... the no, no, the, I couldn't. Which one was the higher production uh, value? Was it the Echoes or was it the Bugman? Which one was the higher production value? Was Echoes it Echoes? 
I I, got it. Got it. So, uh, you know, you're standing there on the stage and you're by yourself getting ready to play the song and you point at all of your friends and they all run up on stage with you and they're all playing instruments and you're playing another hit for the, the uh, Frank and the, the, the Strahd experience. I don't know what your band name is, but that's just what I pop, what popped into my head. And I, I, I just hope in Frank's dream, uh, the instrument Gorpel is playing is just a big moonshine jug. That he's blowing. I'm definitely playing the drums on this. And you hear this. Every morning I hear a crunch I know it's TikTok Eating a bunch of birds Why does he do this to them? I don't know I wish he'd stop so that Echo doesn't know Mr. Walkman I forgot. I forgot that that was like a fever dream of Frank's, <laughs> like mm-hmm. because he always hears he always hears TikTok and is afraid to like confront TikTok about eating the birds in the morning. I Guess forgot what you're waking up to. <laughs> Instead of like a a, bur- a rooster uh, calling in the morning, you just hear a different bird sound. Yeah. TikTok's just standing over top of me for no reason eating a random yeah. bird. It has nothing eating to do stuff. with the normal story now. <laughs> just feathers in his mandibles. So um uh as that uh so you're 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 in this uh you know dream state and you're seeing all this stuff happen. As soon as the song's over, the entire crowd, you're now no longer in a tavern, you're in an auditorium or a stadium somewhere, and there are just tens of thousands of people all screaming, chanting, Frank. Frank, Frank, Frank. And you see these things being hurled from the, the, the crowd you know, onto the stage and you look down and it's steaming hot dream pastries and the smell is getting to you and you're just exactly you start you, you start feeling this this craving, this want, this desire. Um and yeah that's uh that that that's is there anything else happening in Frank's best day uh so in the crowd he notices um like as the the pastries are hitting up he's kind of like focusing on those he's starting to do that homer drool thing and the lights sort of like start to hone in on like just the center of the crowd. And as they slowly come to um, sort of like a, a perfect oval, he can see that it's his clan that he hasn't seen in probably over a year or two. Um, then they're all there and they're all cheering him on. Um, but there's one in the center and it's um, his best friend growing up is look, looking at him dead in his eyes and doing this, just shaking his head back and forth with no expression on his face at all. Just deadpan staring at Frank's eyes. And um, I think Frank wakes up. Um, We'll get to that. He's not that part of the dream. Um, 
fast forward to the um uh the morning um everybody kind of wakes up with the rest of the camp because you're all kind of sleeping outside except for TikTok who's not sleeping at all but um once the vistani start getting up and moving around and doing things it's kind of hard to stay asleep through that uh one by one each one of you uh, rises from your sleep, except for Frank. Uh, yes, TikTok. I want to make sure that I'm, uh, you know, doing my morning uh, hunt for uh, small creatures that tend to uh, be around when Echo is, and uh, make sure that I, I'm above Frank while I'm having my morning breakfast. Once I see the hustle and bustle start moving, and and other everybody else is starting to get up. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so, so, so Frank, someone's crunching above you, but you're still asleep. Um, and yeah, TikTok, you, 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 you were, since you're the closest to him at this point, um, you notice that you're looking around the camp and pretty much everybody's awake except for Frank. Uh, I'll use my extra hand and, and shake him. You shake him and nothing happens. He uh, he continues to uh, to sleep. He's definitely breathing though. He's breathing. Uh, you can see a lot of drool coming out of the side of his mouth. Tons, buckets of drool. <laughs> Two of my lower arms to grab him and shake him a little harder. Hit me with your strong hand. That's next. Frank, you slowly start to wake up. Uh, Everyone's getting up. Well, it's not a school day. Son of a bitch. Are you hungry? And he, and he stands up. <laughs> oh, he doesn't stand up. I think I think Frank is struggling. So he's he I yes. think he's sort of infuriated by this, but he's struggling to actually wake up. And he's you catch him saying things like he I mean he's got one eye open now looking at TikTok and he's saying things like, You son of a bitch. <laughs> but he can't can't get like, you know, all the way up. Yeah, you do feel very, 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 very heavy, very groggy. Um and very hungry. Um but after a after a few minutes of mumbling and 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 fighting to get yourself up, you actually start to feel better, stronger almost, more alert. Like you can hear things further away or see things further away. Almost like you have like a sixth sense kind of. I can taste colors, man. <laughs> Um, Frank's, Frank's breathing hard as he's noticing these things. Mm -hmm. and, you can feel uh, you can feel things that you didn't feel. Like you feel like you can hear someone else's heart beating, and it's very unsettling. He takes this opportunity. TikTok standing directly next to him. He's not looking at TikTok. He's looking far out, far, far out into the distance, into the woods, trying to like scan to see if he can hear the heartbeat. And TikTok is just crunch, crunch crunching away on this bird and he takes the opportunity to just slap the bird out of his hand without even looking <laughs> uh roll, so, roll me two d20s oh okay that's a nat and a two. Oh wow oh shoo. so with that 20 yeah you're not even looking at tiktok and you smack that bird dead center straight out of his hand um and tiktok you were trying to move that bird out of the way too um there was some Im Im ridiculously fast reflexes that frank is uh showcasing right now are you okay? He's, he's, still, he's still breathing hard. He's not looking at TikTok at all. And he says, I don't like when you do that. I think you know I don't like when you do that. He's like raising his voice a little bit and breathing really hard and 
not looking Wake at them. you in the morning? When you eat the little birds. Oh. I will have breakfast before you wake next time. <laughs> I'm always awake when you do it. I've been hearing you do it for weeks now. Why do you torment the little birds? And he's still staring out, not even looking at him. Well, what else would one eat? I think this is it's important to note that normally Frank's a little scared of TikTok. But whatever's happening to him right now has made him more outspoken, more direct, more... Uh, aggressive with the things he believes in and with what he wants. Um. So uh, uh, this this is happening, and as this is happening, um, uh, Gorpel, uh, one of the Vistani comes up to you and says, "Hey, uh, Madam Eva told us that uh, you wanted uh, this," and he kind of holds up a bag filled with incense. Oh, oh, yes, uh, uh, very kind of her, uh, be sure to pass along, uh, uh my thanks to, to, to Madam Ava. Absolutely, will do. Um, I do not mean to tell you what to do. You all are very welcome to stay here as long as you'd like, but, uh, the road is not safe at night. Uh, you should probably leave as soon as possible, take advantage of as much for little daylight we are... Uh, afforded here in Barovia. Oh, it might be a little sore. This bag weighs about an ounce. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, he he looks at you and says, "Sadly, we cannot uh, uh we cannot give you any of our horses, but um, here uh here is the map with some more places uh marked for you, um." If you're trying to get to uh, the village of Valakai, my recommendation is just to follow the road straight through. You'll come to a f you'll come to a crossroads. If you go to the right, it will take you to Castle Ravenloft. Do not go right. Um. Do not go right where again? Uh, at the crossroads, he said. He uh, And then he continues and says, uh, The crossroads is maybe uh, days past the old stone mill. Ooh, you'll get to the stone mill, you'll know you're getting close to crossroads. Um, to which uh, he says, I wish you all very much luck. And... Uh, Hopefully we see each other again. I'd hate to have you be just another story we tell to other passerbys. And then he just kind of like goes off about his uh, his business. Leaving kind of like the rest of you standing there ready uh, to venture forth. Unless there's anything else that you all want to do here in the camp. Uh... <laughs> Not in particular. Uh, I think I got everything I need for the road. <laughs> I love that. Um. Yeah. So you all just start. The um, guy has like five hundred kids. What do you expect? Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's too many. Um. As you all um, as you all make your way, uh, out of the camp. Uh. Maybe one of you has a little bit of a song in your heart. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. I'm trying oh, to help. right. Yes. Uh, hold on. Pass the duchy to the left hand side. <laughs> <laughs> Frank is to his left. And, uh, shit, my brain. <laughs> uh, he takes it and he just uh you know 
takes a fat fucking rip off of it and then hands it behind. And usually Frank is like, oh, what are these weird worldly things? But he takes a fat, fat rip and then hands it behind him. Too bashful. I call them Gorpal Snacks. <laughs> Gorpies for short. Gorpies. I take and I take a good old drag like oh that's some of that good shit then I blow a smoke ring <laughs> and I just pass it to whoever wants it next Echo, TikTok TikTok Echo, will give Echo, a Echo shot. 2 <laughs> Echo 2 Roll the Constitution team. I, I forgot her name I'm sorry <laughs> TikTok is, grabs yeah. the, the, the incense Gives it a shot. Curious human behaviors. <laughs> but, uh, this, this makes me feel like a virgin. Touched. For the very first time. Like a virgin. And he puts his hand on Frank. With your heartbeat next to mine. Oh, your heartbeat next to mine. I, I hear your words, friend. And I will heed them. <laughs> All is forgotten thanks to these incense. <laughs> uh, after after about hold on a second. After about, uh, you know, a few hours worth of, of, of walking down the, uh, the, the path, uh, it winds around a little bit, but off in the distance, very, very tiny in front of some dark, ominous clouds, you see the outline of a windmill and that's where we're going to go ahead and, and today's session we're cutting it short a little bit i did not want um i i didn't want to get into the next area without our full party so join us next week we'll make sure we go ahead and get that uh ready for you all uh thank you all for uh for joining us um First off, let's go ahead and thank my wonderful cast of uh, Jen Washi Tashi fr uh, playing Frank. Thanks, Frank. Hey, thank you. And uh, thank Nat for uh, doing an excellent job as TikTok the Three Queen Fighter Psy Warrior. You're welcome. <laughs> it's, it's so weird. Thanks. Every Thanks to Merc Puppy for doing an excellent job playing Bashful Under River, the dwarf uh, Path of the Berserker Barbarian. I hope I get to punch something next episode. Mm -hmm. uh, join us next week where we will have uh, our wonderful Tavy Trash playing Echo Stonebridge, the human warlock. And thanks so much to Good Devil for doing such a wonderful job playing the father of over 500 children now. The uh, life domain turtle cleric. Life domain is right. Uh, and for any complaints about uh, tonight's sound effects, please forward all complaints to the uh, to the foley department. <laughs> Where were your? Mates? I can't. I can't. I can't do that. Uh, so you want. You want map. You want map. Here's. Here's. Here's that. Is that what you wanted? You wanted this map. Is that. Is this the map you wanted, Veej? As we leave. Uh, go ahead and find us a raid here while I go ahead and tell us what we've got going on this week. Uh, tomorrow we have, uh, the continuation of our Star Wars campaign. Join us as, uh, Bruce Gaskin masterfully, uh, navigates us through this horrible, horrible place that we are. Maybe one day we'll leave. Uh, Friday, we've got nothing going on. Um, Saturday, we are pushing back the season two of, uh, Rifts, the... Uh, Meg, the, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Megaverse. Got it. Um, uh, so join us the following week when we get to that. Um, 
And uh, this Sunday, 8.30, sorry, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we've got D&D 5th Edition Tomb of Annihilation. As DM Dave, no, not that one, uh, takes this crew uh, further along. And, hey, maybe we'll figure out why they have wings and, and, and stuff. They're flying around now. It's crazy. There was boat weddings. Now they're flying around. Uh, episode two of the the Tales of the Solar Patrol uh, will happen this Monday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Please come join us. Help us figure out what the hell we're doing because we don't know. Uh, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we've got our Conan game. Join us for that one. And then Billy F. and Wildstar will be playing uh, uh, on his channel. Uh, from 9 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. We'll be back next week at 8 p.m. for the Curse of Strahd. Thank you all so much. If you liked it, hit the follow button. Thanks. Bye.